Hello and welcome back to Politically Incorrect. I'm Carmen Cristiano. Uh, we have an outstanding panel on the show tonight with three state representatives. All three state representatives uh, represent Chelmsford. And we would have the fourth uh, representative on the show tonight, Corey Atkins, except that she's going to be on this show in three weeks debating her Republican opponent, Michael Bean, uh, for her state representative uh, race then. So that's why uh, she isn't on the show tonight, but we're fortunate to have Dave Nangle with us tonight. How are you, Dave? Glad to be here, Carmen. Thank you for having us. Hey, thanks for being back, Dave. It's been quite a while uh, since yeah. you've been on the show. But it's been tough because you only represent one precinct in Chelmsford, right, Dave? Correct. I have Precinct 4, which is known as the East Chelmsford area. It uh, used to be an extension of the old Sacred Heart Parish in Lowell sometime uh, some years ago when Ed Lalasha held the seat, and then it's changed a couple of times in redistricting since. So I'm, I'm glad to uh, be here and glad to represent part of Chelmsford. Well, I'm, I'm glad uh, you could be here again. Thanks, Dave. And we'll Thank talk you. a little bit about where I saw you all yesterday. We all worked together <laughs> in that Senior Center barbecue, which you all sponsor, and you did a great job. And uh, we have Tom Golden with us tonight. How are you, Tom? Good, Carmen. How are you doing? Good, good, thanks. Thank Tom, you very much for your help yesterday. Oh, my pleasure. The it's best a lot of fun. hamburger flipper out there. That's right. He <laughs> was. A cook. And we uh, got, you got uh, over 100 senior citizens we had a lot of, that yeah, barbecue, right? Absolutely. There was a lot Every of seniors year? there. Everyone had a lot of, a lot of fun, I think. It was great. And what's it, your third, fourth, fifth year of doing that or uh, something? Jimmy, I think fourth. About the fourth? Yeah, I think yeah. fourth or it's so. It's great. Yes. It's something that we, uh, we came up with an idea just to. Um, you know, help out the community, help out the seniors, and actually just an opportunity to inter interact with people at a different time, more yeah. relaxed setting, and really the politics are in a big down low, yes, but if yeah. people have questions and concerns or just something they want to talk about, we I think we all picked up a case or two or a discussion or two mm -hmm. with uh, some seniors and great. what they need. So it was, a great, it was a great day. Wonderful. Well, if I'm around, don't forget to invite me again next year. Absolutely. Which, no, you, you got a standing which Jim invitation. Jim always does. Thank with you. With the amount of work that you do, you got a standing invitation. <laughs> thank you. you thank me? you. A few of the seniors recognized me, though, coming through the line there, right? So yeah, they, absolutely. They saw the show yes. and all that. And I think they said uh, Representative Nangle, right? right? Is that how they looked at you? <laughs> <laughs> we could pass for each other. We could pass for each other. Sure. Put the glasses on, right? So, Tom, it's your 17th time in the show, so thanks a lot for all those Not times. Not a problem I at guess all. it's been about 10 years yep. you've been representing Chelmsford, so yes. thank you very much. And we also have my good friend Jim Arcero with us tonight. How are you, Jim? I'm doing well. Thank you so much for having us here. This is great. Yeah, I think it's great to have all of you on the show. We're going to have so much to talk about. And this is your seventh time on the show. It is. Jim. Quite an honor. I'm what? trying to make it up to, you know, 20, year, 20 uh, shows at some point. I yes. want to know yeah. what I get for 20 shows. That's what I want to know. I mean, <laughs> I know. what, I have to think what happens, what You're goes on. You're getting close, on. so you better start planning a representative. I'll have to bring a cake that day a cake, or something. I mean, yeah. uh, the Balloons. fanfare. Can I ask a question? I thought a gala. Has, has Tom brought in coffee and donuts in the 17 years no. he's been coming here? <laughs> 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 no, but See, I'm waiting. He's waiting. For <laughs> I'm, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm waiting, I'm for, waiting for 20 years. That's right. We want to know what we get for that. Remember, um, Paul Sullivan's radio show. I'm sure you all sure, remember that. Yeah. And that was a big deal with him. Remember to bring in bagels. You remember that, oh, right? Oh, yes, yes, I do. And Certainly. the people come in and uh, they want him to bring in bagels or something, you know. Coffee, so bagels, That was when donut. he was down at WLLH, and then he went on to bigger and better things down Easy. at WBZ uh, yes. at the end of uh, the mm -hmm. poor man that, uh, at yeah. the end of his career. Mm -hmm. And uh, there's a show in Lowell coming that uh, we have to go on to now and then, and it's almost like a prerequisite that you bring coffee and donuts oh, down really? to the oh, John geez. McDonough show, so sure. I didn't bring any this morning, oh. so I was kind of <laughs> chastised a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> so. And he asks so. about that, doesn't he? Oh, he does all the time. I remember oh, well, CAP, I, I think when I first ran, that's what I did as well. I brought in oh, the yeah. coffee and donuts mm. for that show. Oh, so. I see. <laughs> I eat donuts every day. I mean, I love well, them, you know, yeah. I don't know. It's Especially that early. Oh, yeah, Tommy yeah. and I eat them every yeah, day anyway. I don't miss them. We're taping this show just before supper time, though, so it's probably good we're not bringing donuts just just before That's a supper, idea. so. Yeah, certainly. Well, I thought maybe if we could start with just a quick summary of where we're at, at in terms of the election cycle this year. Maybe if we could start with Dave. Uh, Dave, do you have an opponent this sure. year? Sure, Carmen, I do. I, uh, in the 17th Middlesex District, yeah. I'm uh, going for my eighth term, and um, I have an opponent uh, over a gentleman by the name of Martin Burke, although I, um, ha we, he hasn't, I haven't seen him anywhere when I, doing too much, but I am, I should say, let me rephrase that. I'm out uh, knocking on doors, meeting with the voters, and attending all the different events and doing everything that I've done over the past 14 years. And uh, we just get everything all planned out. You kind of work back from Election Day on November 6th is what you do. Um, I was taught by a great guy by the name of D.J. Cochran that these two <coughs> didn't know mm -hmm. back when in 1998. And you kind of work your way back 
uh, out from the election the day of. You've got to have your poll workers and make sure of that. And for a couple of weeks before, you're doing your visibility. And in that same time frame, you're sending out all your <coughs> mailings as yes. we were going over we here. And just doing all your door knocking and going out and meeting people and uh, finding out what their concerns and thoughts and criticisms are. And you take it all and kind of just combine it all and do the best you can. Wonderful. Well, good luck. Thank you. Dave this and, year. Uh, we're looking and all those people it. in Precinct 4, don't forget, Dave. Thank you, Kevin. I appreciate that. And the Republican that. opponent, if you happen to be watching the show, you're welcome to come on, too. I like to be fair to everyone. Sure. It's just that you haven't contacted me yet, so uh, you, have, you need to do that. Any opponents out there, mm -hmm. just contact me, and I'll try to definitely fit you in before the election. Sure. So, so thanks a lot, Dave. We Thank enjoyed you, that. Dave. Thank you. And Jim, what's the status with you? I think you have an <coughs> opponent. Sure, well, um, you know, I'm running for my third term. I can't believe yeah. it's my third term already. Yeah, right. My yeah, junior yeah. year, I guess. Yeah, and, yeah. Uh, um, you know, I had uh, my, uh, some of my volunteers out um, this primary day to, you know, go through a dry run, if you will. So it's, you know, such a tremendous amount of work that goes into this, and you guys yeah. know that. Um, you know, raising money, um, you know, making sure that your volunteers are ready for Election Day. Um, knocking on doors, you know, I started August 1st when we got out of session. Um, you know, I have a new precinct, precinct date, and in, in, uh, in Chelmsford, Representative Golden and I, um, I had three. There's a little bit of a difference. I think three and eight are kind of split, and um, so I had some new um, constituents um, if things so are successful, and so I was, you know, knocking on doors and, and starting to introduce myself. And what precincts are you going Five, to Five, seven, and eight. Five, seven, and eight, great. So eight would be new for me if I'm successful in November, so I wanted to, you know, introduce myself. And you have a campaign party coming up in Westford soon, right? I do, I do, um, on Thursday the 20th, so the it's going to be a week Westford. from this Thursday. Yeah, at, at the, the Westford, Westford Regency. Regency. Yep. Right. At what time does that begin? It's going to be from 6 to 8. 6 to 8, great. So, you great. know, if you could stop by, I'd appreciate it. Um, these things are always nerve-wracking, as anybody in politics knows. Yeah. Uh, you know, we make frantic calls up into the last, uh, you know, 15, 20 minutes of the event, you know. Because we, you know, being in politics, we know that it could be a stinker, or it could be very successful, yeah. and you know we've all been very successful, and but it's really been a lot of you know hard work and elbow grease. So. And none of it's indication of how you're going to do in the election. Yeah, right. yeah. yeah. exactly. You know, I, exactly. I, I've, 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 we've all been to parties that have been you know you you see the doors blown off. Yeah. And the yeah. candidate loses. Really? Sure. And then you go to parties where no one shows up. Yeah. And, Absolutely. You know, candidate yeah. tops the ticket. It's, it's just amazing. Uh, but yeah. for for someone who's running like Jimmy. Yeah. Right now, he, yeah. it's just, it's, uh, it's very nerve-wracking. Yeah. It and, certainly is. And I haven't heard from Jim's opponent yet this year. So if you're out there, any of your rep her representatives, please contact me, and I'd love to have you on the show. Or if not, no big deal. Or if not, yeah, right. <laughs> but we're and not pushing uh, that. Yeah, we're not. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have an opponent this year, so I can say that. <laughs> That's right. But thanks again for being on the show. Yeah, it's your it's, seventh it's, time. It's happy to be Jim. here. It's very been, happy to it's be here. It's a lot of fun. I remember the first debate I hosted with you and Pat Wojcic. Pat Wojcic, it's right. It was great. That's right. And uh, ever since then, we've been uh, seven times already, and I've been to many of your parties. And having we talked on the phone so many times, it's great. You're Certainly. a good friend, I think. I consider you anyway. No, thank you. You Thanks. too. Thanks. And we have my good friend uh, Tom Golden with us tonight too. Carmen, how's uh, that? How's everything going? Everything great, going great. Great. Good. And Jim, you don't have any uh, opposition this year, no. right? I had two people that pulled papers. I had a Republican oh. that uh, pulled papers, and I had somebody else by the uh, a pirate party, which I. It's a party designation. And, really? Uh, yeah. A Can you expo party? explain to me, Representative, what the pirate party is? Uh, well, I could work <laughs> on it. <laughs> I can try to. Um, it's really uh, a national movement, and it's really congressional more so than anything. Oh. But um, it's about a lot about Internet privacy and Internet freedom and oh, yeah, things of yeah, that, that nature. That, yes. But um, I met both gentlemen, really good guys, and they were out knocking doors. Uh, we were all not Well, we've all knocked doors. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. It is that season. You know, getting our signatures, trying to get, to, as David had said, the criticisms and the and the helpful hints, or why are we doing this? Why can't we do this? Here's an idea that I have, and at the same time, you know, getting signatures for uh, our reelection. But I was fortunate enough; the two gentlemen decided not to put their papers back in. I wonder uh, why. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, but uh, well, I was very happy that that didn't happen because, yeah, you know, it is well, stressful. Uh, yes, I, you know, I've talked yeah. to David a number of times and Jim a number of times on just different aspects and yeah. you know we're always bouncing ideas off each other what do you think what's going on uh, and you know it's uh, it's oh, got to be is. quite it's honest with stressful. you it's yeah it's yeah. a very stressful time um, in, in yes. politics with yeah. what's going on in the economy and everything else it's yes. different it's oh, pretty yeah. difficult but so how many years have you served now Tom? I'm going for my 10th term actually. 10th term wow yep. fantastic and 
You haven't decided to run for governor no, yet? No, no. I used yeah, to mention yeah. that to you, you like 10 years yeah. ago. Yeah, and I keep saying you. you like me because That's I don't know. Yeah. You know uh, they, they throw right. rocks at the governor, I mean. Well, uh, too, but it's a very important job, and you could have so much uh, I appreciate influence that. on society that way. I, I prefer it over Congress, right? Because in Congress, you're one of like 430 mm -hmm. members or yep. whatever. But a governor, you're an executive of the state. You have so much power, I think, to I do think a lot of things. I think the thing that drives us is the fact that we still have an opportunity to knock on those doors, mm -hmm. still have an opportunity to receive that phone call, call the folks back, mm -hmm. get that one-on-one -on -one type um, relationship. When you go up to, say, Congress or even state senate to some, ex to some extent, yeah. and of course governor, I mean, you really can't, if you call Jim's office or David's office, it's not uncommon in my office, that we're going to pick up the phone and say hello. Yes. Right. Yes. People, yes, people are shocked by that when uh, yeah. when we right. pick up the phone. I'm like, well, you know, for you, uh, you're one person, one person, one person in the office. Well, if they're on lunch or if they're out doing mm -hmm. something, yes. <laughs> right. who yeah. else is going to answer the phone? Yeah. It's just yeah. you know, exactly. but, no, it's uh, great. Yeah. So. Well, well, if you become governor, you answer the phone once in a while. I'm, so we're gonna <laughs> <laughs> I'm with you, Carmen. Yeah. Jimmy, yeah. let's get that started. Yeah, let's yeah. 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 Okay, yeah. 2014. I'll tell you what, you two, ready. yeah, keep it up. Both I of think, us. By the <laughs> way, who do you think will run after Deval Patrick uh, finishes this term? This is the best part about uh, politics. Mm -hmm. Everyone has an idea or a mm -hmm. thought or a rumor. and uh, you know. Well, yeah, I know very often attorney generals run for governor, right? Mm -hmm. We had Harsh Barger and others. Yeah. I'd love to see Martha Coakley run. Personally, I think she's personally. I think she's a great uh, public servant. Yeah. I think she's done a lot for our, our people, and and she's been on this show before. And I've gotten to meet her personally. I like her very much. Mm -hmm. So I'd love to see her run. I think she'd be great. I think that you'd have um, the treasurer, uh, Steve Grossman. I think you'd have. Susan oh, he's Bump. great too. Yeah. He's been yeah. on the show. Yeah. Wonderful guy. Susan mm -hmm. Bump would probably take a look at it. She she seems to be very good too. I love that. She's really seemed to bring, bring a lot of integrity and hard mm -hmm. work and cleaning things up from what you know sure. what I'm reading about what she's doing. And of course, you can't forget the lieutenant governor. Mm -hmm. I mean, lieutenant governor's had some challenges. Yeah, he's had uh, some challenges. So then, uh, we'll see how it goes. Right, Would but I, I mean, who's going to do it? Who's going to pull the trigger yeah. and do it? Yeah, I mean, I, I, you know, say. it's kind of when's that coming up? 2014. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. 14. Pretty soon. I think Charlie yeah. Baker will run again on the yeah. Republican okay. ticket. Charlie Baker. So. Okay. I think yeah, he's getting around. He's getting around through the state now. He'd have a chance because he did okay last time. You know, not too bad. Certainly, okay, no, did, certainly. Yeah. You know, he's uh, he's, he's a, a very formidable, formidable candidate. He's a very candidate, yeah. bright, bright guy who yeah. you know was the A and F secretary under Weld. So. so he might very well win. And who knows? What happens next after this U.S. Senate race? Yeah. Who right. you know? There's only going to be one winner. Yeah. And that yeah. Per that next person. Oh, that's right. Too, that's right. So you got one, one person going to have decide. tremendous name recognition. Yes. Uh, and who would be a tremendous candidate? I think either yeah. one mm -hmm. really right. a very strong candidate. So I think Either you know Scott Brown or Elizabeth. Think about the president winning as well. Would a few points carry some at, to, to a position? Right. You know, that there might be an opening there as well. That's the best. That's the then best. Then you part could of have uh, Governor Patrick taking a position as well, and I then that, yeah. uh, Lieutenant Governor Murray could Being become the acting, acting governor. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, so he would have a leg up on anybody. He'd have the acting that's governor what I'm gonna title. Do. Yes. Yeah. I'm gonna. That's what I'm gonna do when that happens. What are you gonna do? We'll start running for governor then. Yeah. No, I said we. Governor, oh, Lieutenant Governor. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. right. The ticket's right here. <laughs> There's a library safety. trustee. That's about it for me. <laughs> <laughs> State Representative Tom Golden, <laughs> Carmen Cristiano. <laughs> library trustee. Hey, library at least I have the Carmen name now. Well, as governor, it, he could elevate more, your uh, position. ethnic, right? So it might get me more uh, ethnic votes or yeah, something. Yeah, who knows? Split it. <laughs> but what Jimmy alluded to a minute ago, the dynamics could change quite a bit yeah. if uh, if the president is reelected. And it's pretty much a foregone conclusion that uh, Senator Kerry would probably take uh, Secretary of State Hillary Clinton's position because yeah. mm -hmm. she's already said she's stepping down. Yes. So I have to believe you hear all the innuendos yeah. that Senator Kerry would go there, which would then open up the sen U.S. Senate seat. So yes. the whole playing field changes again. All of those individuals we just mentioned, the Attorney General and the Treasurer and the Auditor would all, I'm sure, have some sort of interest yeah. along with the Lieutenant Governor for that position. Mm -hmm. Yes. And don't ever forget there's a gentleman just down the street here that's uh, known as Martyville lately over at the University. <laughs> You That's know, right. Remember, he used to be talked about for running for no, these kinds still, of offices. Yeah. He still has I like Marty. Too. Five he's a great or six million guy. dollars. Yeah. I mean, he still yeah, has all guy. that money. He's done a wonderful yeah. job in Lowell. Mm -hmm. for he's done a great yeah, he job kept at the that, university. that treasury you're talking about, the, the money he had in yeah, the bank. Campaign five, the campaign, campaign like five million or six sure. million. Yeah. That's yeah. amazing. Yeah, yeah. That's a good yeah he's a He'd be a formidable candidate as well. He's done well there at the University of Lowell, right? He's done a great job, and that helps. So he's done a great job. I mean, because it's he stepped out and you know took on a project, another project, which was obviously still public, but it's completely different from what he was doing previously. Yes, yes. 
and I think he's doing a great job. Well, it's an executive position now. It's kind of like governor, but in a smaller setting. Right. And if you could run that executive body, the big organization, very well, it indicates how you might run the big organization of the state of, of Massachusetts. The state of Massachusetts. Yeah. Right. So. No, he'd be very capable, and uh, he'd be a formidable candidate. I could yeah. say that. That's yeah. for sure. But I think you have so many, uh, you know, unknown, moving pieces yeah. and unknown pieces, yes. and it, it's probably all going to probably shake out in the next six months. But I will say, I still think that Hillary is stepping down yeah. to recharge batteries, yeah. Yeah. and I think you're going to see her run for president. Oh, yeah. A lot I of people are talking about that now. I, I was just talking time. to uh, a school committee member today, Janet Askenberg, about that. Mm -hmm. uh, and we both think she would be a formidable candidate, Absolutely. Hillary Clinton, in 2016, mm -hmm. along with uh, some other people, too, that we talked about, you but know, on the Republican side. Yeah. But on the Democrat side, you know that the governor of New York uh, is doing a great job, Cuomo, Cuomo yeah. Yeah. Andrew Cuomo. Who was the gentleman that just spoke, the governor, uh, young, was the governor from, it wasn't Texas, I'm sorry. Oh, the uh, uh, mayor. The mayor. The young man, oh, yeah, 26 the, years old, was he? Yes. Of San Antonio. Yeah. San Antonio. Castro. 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 San Antonio. Yeah. 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 Castro. Is he 26 he did, he did or is he 36? 36, 36, I thought. Okay. I think he's 26. Yeah. yeah. But, yeah, 30 uh, something, yeah. you know, he's, I think something like that. Too. Obviously being talking, I mean, that's yeah, just, a, be a, while for him, just a lot of people, but, you know, if but you really Andrew think about Cuomo, it. Andrew Cuomo, though, is doing, it seems to be a very good independent type job sure. in New York, which is what I like, mm -hmm. that it is not extremely left, not extremely right, right. Mm -hmm. just seems that what will solve the problem, what's the best for the I state I think he's kind of like us right here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, right? Yeah. Yes. I mean, because most of the, most of people in politics, I, I think, anyhow, you're in the middle. Yes. You know, the, yeah, the, the, there, there are some aspects that yeah. you might be socially liberal on or yeah. liberal on, yeah. but in, in other aspects, you're conservative. Yeah. So I, I, I think that's what um, constituents that I talk to want. Yes. They want somebody who is not an extremist to the left or an extremist to the right, but they want somebody who's in the middle and takes an account as to what's going on yes. and what needs to be done at that time. Yes, I agree. Those are the mm -hmm. kind of candidates I, I love, and mm -hmm. I love to vote for them. Unfortunately, sometimes to get through the primary, especially on the national level, it's very difficult because, you know, Democrats have to run more to the left, Republicans more to the right. Yeah. You probably watch all the Republican debates, sure. right, mm -hmm. for president and all the things they were saying, huge walls in Mexico, all these, I mean, very extremist and positions. Then you see attack right and back now, into the And center, now you know, Romney I mean, is going right, right to the center as much as he can. He's changing <laughs> his positions like every day. I mean, now they're making more sense to me, you know, in terms of accepting some aspects of the health care plan, mm -hmm. you know, allowing people to come in if they have pre-existing conditions. Now, he used to talk about staying in Afghanistan until we get every t a Taliban. Now he recently changed it to 2014 they're going to get out, which is a much more viable position, and it happens to agree with President Obama, right? Mm -hmm. You, know you have to watch so that every single day, every moment of yeah. to find out which position is being. It's, yeah, 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 it's changing a lot. But about. anyway, that's the, we have uh, so much to talk about. This is fantastic. Yeah, we should <laughs> do this all the time. <laughs> I could do this. We, we don't even need notes or anything. But, no. yeah. but one of the most important things, as you know, right now in the entire U.S. economy, maybe if we could start with Dave on that and yeah. then go to Jim and Tom, is uh, the jobs and the economy. What's going on with it? How can we bring more jobs into the state? What's going on with the economy? Well, as we know, the economy has kind of tanked out over the last several years, unfortunately. And the key to improving the economy is jobs, jobs, and jobs. Here in Massachusetts, we're below the national average of unemployment. It's always just above eight, I believe, nationally. And what are we at, 6'4"? Uh, yeah, about uh, six, maybe 6'1", yeah. yeah. something six like that. Six in that area. So we've done better than some of the other yes. states on the national yeah. level as far as uh, retaining jobs and, and, and uh, creating jobs. And that's always been the big thing. I, um, you know, I have a little bit of a problem with the governor presently always traveling about and he's campaigning, but at the same time, I'd rather see him put more efforts into going to other states and other countries trying to bring more jobs back here to Massachusetts. I mean, as you know, the healthcare industry here and we have an education system here where there are a lot of uh, employment opportunities, but the only way that you're going to ever stimulate uh, is through jobs, 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 as we've always said. Yes. I don't have the magic wand, but I just yes. think that we need to create manufacturing jobs here. I mean, the biotech industry is here as well. And so there's a whole group of things. If we just concentrated here a little more, I think that we could probably create some more new employment here in the Commonwealth and uh, do something that we can do. Yes, yeah, thanks Dave. Jim, what are your thoughts? Well, you know, Dave uh, kind of hit on it. You know, obviously economic development and jobs have been, um, you know, really the thing that most uh, leaders right now in Massachusetts and throughout the country are focusing on. Um, I think something we all did and we all embraced in the, the state budget was the skills gap. And essentially, it was something I actually filed um, a bill 
in 2008 when I first ran, it was really to get your arms around the 240,000 people we have unemployed in Massachusetts. And um, currently there's 190 to 120,000 jobs that are unfilled, but people don't have the necessary skills to fill those positions. In Massachusetts? In Massachusetts seven? alone. Wow. Um, so how do we get our arms around that and figure out the necessary skills? Well, Middlesex Community College, that um, the two representatives from Lowell know very well, yeah. and they've really done a tremendous job at identifying those particular skills getting those classes and offering those programs and those curriculums Great. to get those workers out there to fill those jobs. Wonderful. Now, the piece to that that we needed to get our arms around as well was figuring out a way to coordinate the community colleges, the 15 community colleges. You know, Middlesex has been quite a leader. Yeah. But the other four, uh, 14 community colleges, you know, we really needed to, to create some sort of a, an agenda in which yeah. we can um, identify the jobs, especially high tech, especially in, um, in health care, yes. and get the necessary skills to fill those. Yeah. So in the budget this year, um, there was some resistance at first to create a system because UMass is a system, yeah. but we did a coordination and that was one, um, putting a member uh, appointed by the governor on each board of trustees for the community colleges, yeah. making sure the community colleges kept their separate autonomy, yeah. and then um, also coordinating with vocational schools. So mm -hmm. there's members of the vocational schools, yes. a member of a vocational school appointed the community colleges. So we're coordinating, yes. you know, the, the younger folks who are, are looking for skills we are coordinating the community colleges to, to get the necessary education yeah. uh, programs um, yeah. for the workers. And you know, if we can cut that in half, um, you know, that's the unemployment, uh, the unemployment from 240,000 to, yeah. to fill, you know, yeah. even 90,000. Yeah. Um, we're on our way to, um, you know, uh, starting to make sure that we have a, a thriving economy. Yeah. And we all yeah. did this. We all yeah. did this in the budget this year. Yes. It was something we all embraced. Um, and we know firsthand because we have Middlesex that's really led the way on this issue. Yes. So. And the governor uh, proposed this, right? It was a very uh, proposal. The governor and the, the Boston Foundation came up with some of the original statistics. Yeah. Um, it was a little bit raw before I know Senator Panjitakis, the former senator, um, yeah. pushed this issue yeah. in, in 2007 and 2008. Um, I know Jobs for Mass that I know yeah. um, uh, Representative Golden and Angle have both attended in Boston quite a bit yeah. um, the last 10 years, um, talked about these issues. Yes. And, um, you know, it's something that we got done. It's going gonna, it's gonna to take some shepherding. Yeah. It's going to take, you know, obviously um, some enhancements as we go. There's going to be some bumpy roads, but yeah. I think that's the way to go to make sure that we fill these jobs. That sounds great. Jeff. Yeah. And Tom, what do you think about the job situation I mean, how, here? How, how do I beat these two guys? <laughs> <laughs> right. you know, I mean, because it, it's really um, what we're thinking here. I mean, education and the skills to make sure that we have the people available to fill the jobs. Yes. Mm -hmm. But I think that the other thing that we have done anyways, and I'm talking about Jim and David here, um, we've, I, I think we've given the business uh, community an opportunity to say or, or, or feel comfortable that we're not just raising taxes. Yes. And right. I yeah. think that that brings a lot of confidence yeah. into the business community. Yes. And, you know, there were many opportunities. Many of our colleagues were trying to raise taxes. They thought this is the way to go. And um, I'm going to go on a limb here. I think we all held the line on that. We did. I don't think anybody... Mm -hmm was in favor of that, but uh, that's, that's good you know, for, for business confidence, knowing yeah. that the rules are not going to change mm -hmm. uh, you know, midstream. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. with what uh, Jim was saying and David was saying about education, about increasing the jobs, about increasing opportunities, about trying to give people the, the necessary tools to fill those jobs, yeah. I think at the same time we have to say what we did on the business side, yeah. and that's give the, the business community a sense of relief yeah. that we're not going to go to their pocket and that's yeah. every taxpayer every business owner yes. and we're gonna you know stay the line yes. um, the the rate as David had said is is lower than it is throughout the throughout the country I still think that oh, there the unemployment, are, rate, the unemployment rate. rate I still think that there are plenty of people who are unemployed who are not on the rolls yeah but historically yeah. that figure is correct yeah. but I still think there's a lot of people who are underemployed Yes, yes. Uh, you know, and still looking for that 3%, 4% uh, pay raise yes. that they haven't received for X number of yes. years. Yes, it's been so a terrible, right. almost depression, really, we've been going through. I think it's been an employment depression. I think we have Because if you look at those who really are working part-time, want to work full-time, you look at all those who dropped out of the labor force, mm -hmm. about 380,000 last month alone mm -hmm. in the United States, just dropping out of labor force. It's unbelievable what we've gone through. The unemployment rate really is approaching 20% mm -hmm. when you look at underemployment mm -hmm. and unemployment and dropping out of the labor force, which is a depression, really. But it's the confidence so, that I think we still yeah. have to continue to, to signal yes. to the business community. I mean, there's five or six moving parts. Yeah. And sometimes I really believe that 
whether it be the governor, the president, the state legislature, or wh whomever it is, yeah. you know, when um, it's like the quarterback. Yeah. Sometimes they get way too much credit when things are booming oh, yeah. and way too much blame when things are yeah. going wrong. Mm -hmm. yeah. it, there's, there's a balance someplace in there, but oh, I think yes. that here yeah. in Massachusetts, we're doing the right thing. Yeah. We're trying to keep the business, the confidence of yeah. the taxpayer and businesses, we're trying to keep that confidence up by yes. not continuing to increase taxes yes. right. and, and not increasing taxes at all, I should say. Yeah. And then, uh, th you know, the next piece, obviously, is making sure that people are educated, uh, people that have the ability, have the, uh, the, the ways and the means to, to get to the job and to, yes. to, to fulfill it. Yeah. Don't forget, we have a whole new industry coming here in the next one to two years, the gaming industry. Mm -hmm. that's right, so yes. that's going to create X amount of thousands of jobs coming yes. through here, and they have to be trained. The workforce has yeah. to be trained in that manner as well. So yes. that's something that the community colleges, as Jim was talking about mm -hmm. earlier, mm -hmm. that uh, is going to lead, uh, lead the way on. Yeah. In fact, uh, a member of the Greater Lowell Technical High School Committee had contacted me and was talking about the same thing, you know, starting to train some of the students out there at the uh, the greater old tech so it's something you know it's the jobs are coming down the road yeah. it's going to be a slow process yeah. but it's coming, it's coming. Yeah. something else i'd like to I'd touch on too and um tom was great with with um you know opposing tax increases i mean we really are yes. um you know we're in a unique situation we're so close to the new hampshire border yes. so many of the small businesses get hurt but another thing we were to do locally here is in the, in the the budget this year we also did something called the mass job works grant program mm -hmm. yeah. and what that did was sort of consolidate expedited permitting so we could um, have the necessary infrastructure in place to not only attract and grow jobs here, but to keep them here and keep the um, the, the jobs um, and the, the folks you know here working um, in this area. One of the pieces we worked on was was Kronos, making sure that we got right. mm. uh, four hundred seventy-five thousand dollars. I was just about to say we weren't going to mention that the the, 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 <laughs> uh, the name, but there was another company as well yeah. that we kept here in Massachusetts. We kept it in Massachusetts, right. as Jimmy was saying. The first one was Kronos, and the uh, second one. Was another you another company. You, well, you I just figured. Just, no, well, just they were thinking about going to New Hampshire. Okay, mm -hmm. okay, yeah. But Jim brings up and we, you, we a great point because um, how did we the, man, the manager co manager Cohen and the, the board of selectmen they were calling us to try to see right. if we get uh, mass yeah. jobs, you know, mm -hmm. to get working to get these guys mined. So and part then, of and you did it yeah we did. Oh, yeah. So part of it was it was you could say the company name. It was it was a it was a great partnership. You know, first locally you had to pass a TIF a tax increment finance pro, uh, mm -hmm. program to yeah. make sure that a business like Kronos keeps yeah. their what, 1,048 um, employees here in yes. Chelmsford. Yeah. That's number one. Number two, on our end, um, we were able to leverage $475,000 to make sure that we had the stoplight in David's district, um, the, the traffic light, excuse me, and the walking, um, mm -hmm. the, 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 the walking signal in the traffic yes. light. Yeah. Um, and those are pieces, incredibly important pieces of infrastructure yes. to yeah. let them expand and expand with $7 million to keep Kronos here and grow. Yes. Um, that's one example. Katrina Road. That's Katrina right. Road's another Katrina one. Road. We, mm -hmm. uh, the, 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 the delegation here worked to make sure that we got $600,000 to clean up Katrina Road behind the old Route 3 cinema. Yes. And now mm -hmm. we're going to, uh, you know, have, um, you know, continued economic development there as well. And um, uh, Parker's Road. Parker's Road. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Representative yeah, was Golden was right on. The, he's been the point guy in that issue and was working on it from day one. I mean, a little you bit see, about that, it, Tom. It's the interesting thing about whether you're talking about Katrina, you're talking about Parkhurst, yeah. you're talking about Kronos. A lot of people will say, "Well, which precinct do you represent?" And I mean, we all know mm -hmm. the numbers and we all know the yeah. neighborhoods and everything else. But the one thing that I I really truly believe is that we have a unified voice for Chelmsford. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, when you have four representatives in the Senate calling up to get these things done, yes. um, I'm, I'm going to. You know, I'm going to pat the guys on the back. Yes. You know, who and, and Corey, <laughs> but she's yeah, going to be sure. here in a couple of weeks. Sure. Yeah. Um, yeah. And say that you know it, it's a combined effort to try to get the stuff done. Yes. Mm -hmm. Where the voices yeah. are being, the voice of the town is being heard. Yes. I think the manager, I think the board of selectmen know that they pick up the yeah. phone and they say, "Hey, uh, folks, this is what we want to try to accomplish. This yep. is the help that we need." And um, with the board of selectmen, yeah. the town manager is a great, great asset. I really mm -hmm. believe that. Yeah. Uh, Any time you call, he's there. Picks up that phone. Uh, yeah. Paul, how are we doing this? How are we going to tackle this? What do we yeah. do? Yeah. And, you know, consistently. Yes. Consistently. Not in, in, there's no spikes in, in, mm -hmm. in uh, dips. Yeah. The consistent leadership, making sure that the town of Chelmsford is getting everything it deserves. Yes. Right. Yeah. We have a great team effort, you know, yes. local level, state know, level, I, federal level. I think you're all working very hard for the town of Chelmsford. You know, I, I think we're very fortunate to have all four of you working, along with our state senator, mm -hmm. who now will be, be new mm -hmm. in uh, sure. 
what, January, the, the new office January, holders take yeah. place? First Wednesday, yeah. So uh, I think it's great, you know. But I think it's and important to talk about it, about, you know, you that yeah, Kronos oh, piece. You know, oh, I, yeah. I, I forgot about that, and I'm glad Jim brought that yeah, up. Yeah, you brought That I piece is a, is, it was a great piece, and I can remember when we were there for the, yeah. um, Behind the uh, movie theater there. Oh yeah, that oh, was. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the I never knew it existed. Katrina, honestly, yeah, back yeah. I knew it was there, but I, I didn't know it was called Katrina back Road. I mean, yeah, uh, yeah. David and I worked for the gas company. And I'm yeah. pretty sure we know almost every street. Yeah. A lot of the streets that one, <laughs> but that uh, one didn't ring a bell. <laughs> well, one um, one other little kind of a tax increase. People are talking about. I'm going to mention the bottle bill now. Mm -hmm. Sure. Some people are talking about adding, I guess, a little fee, uh, mm -hmm. uh, five or ten cents per bottle for water and juice now in Massachusetts. We don't have that at the moment. We have it, what, on soda on and soda. beer bottles, I guess, right, things like mm -hmm. that. Carbonated beverages. Carbonated beverages, okay, but not water and juice. So we sell a lot of water bottles and juice bottles yeah, in right. Massachusetts. If we add that tax on, a lot of people are saying, well, peop that's more of an incentive. People go to Nashville, New Hampshire, just over the border there, and buy their water and soda, and, and their other stuff there in New Hampshire. Should we add another tax on to the businesses there, so it makes it harder for them to sell here in Massachusetts. Uh, what do you all think about that? I'm on the Energy Committee, and um, we've heard this time and time again. Mm -hmm. I think it's a broken policy. This is what I think about the bottle bill as a whole. Okay. I have not supported increasing the nickel onto anything. As a matter of fact, mm -hmm. if we could figure out a way to take it off yeah. and increase recycling, yeah. because it, uh, under, this, under that argument, then we should have a nickel on everything. Yeah. We should have a nickel on scratch tickets. Mm -hmm. I see more scratch tickets right. just mm -hmm. thrown yes. carelessly on the ground. Yep. Yep. We have to take, um, I really truly believe that uh, the recycling effort, yeah. this didn't happen because of a nickel on a bottle. I really don't, I, I can remember, and I'm old enough to say this now, but back in the 70s when I was sco in, in school, 70s and yeah. the 80s, there was this big push about recycling, yes. about recycling, yep. about recycling, yep. and that you didn't take your bottle and throw it out on the street. Mm -hmm. You didn't take your trash and throw it on the street. Right. So, I mean, I'm on the committee. We've actually voted to study it, which essentially to kill it, voted, voted back into a study. So that's where it is now. That's where it is it's now. The state house is being Correct. studied. Well, it's, 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 it's dead or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, at this point in time. And I, I, just, uh, I just think we need to look at it another way. Right. Because once again, not saying that it hasn't worked, but we, we, we changed habits. But under that thought process, if we're going to put five cents on a bottle, Right. Why don't we put five cents on a pizza box? Yeah. Why don't we mm -hmm. put five cents but, on everything? But all these taxes just the stats hurt our local businesses, right. and that hurts sure. employment. Mm -hmm. sure. Let we, we lose more jobs. But also, what I don't understand is if people are talking about the environment to put the tax on, it seems to me that I recycle every bottle I buy, whether I buy it in New Hampshire or Massachusetts. I just throw it in the recycle bin, and every two weeks it goes out with the recycle. But so you do that because of education. You do, but, but you do that because of education, I, not necessarily because of the nickel or whatever the case may no, be. No, it's nothing with the money. Right. I just put it in the recycle. So even if we don't have the deposit, I'm saying, we're mm -hmm. still going to help the environment by hopefully recycling right. these water and juice bottles, right? I, recy I mean, I, you know, yeah. I recycle everything, and it's not like yeah. I see a water bottle and I say, oh, this isn't, I don't, I don't toss into yeah, the, right. you know, why? You because, it's, uh, because honestly, so I think it's the education that we've received over the last 30 years. Yeah. And I really do believe this. This is how this, at least how I see it's happened. Yes. And I think that we're only hurting our local businesses. Yeah. Uh, we're driving very people close north. to New Hampshire. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. So any well, other Well, thoughts? no, I mean, I, you know, I, I tend to agree with what Representative Golden's saying in a lot of ways, yeah. and that is that I, I think we should, you know, embrace recycling. Yeah. I really right. think we should, and there, we should embrace yeah. uh, expanded recycling programs. Um, I am mindful, though. I am mindful um, that, that it's possible that this could, um, you know, really exacerbate an already difficult economic situation right now. But I if think we need, if, if, if the yeah. tax is implemented. Yeah. But I think we need further discussion on it. I think we need to continue the debate. I, mean, right. I, I don't think that to completely dismiss it yeah. um, is necessary at this time, but yeah. I, I do think that we have to be mindful of the economic situation. Yeah. But in terms of helping the environment, though, if we recycle these bottles, we are helping the environment, right? That is, right. we don't need a tax to help Certainly. the environment. But, you know, when I had all five state Democratic state Senate candidates yep. here on the show a couple of weeks ago, they all were in favor of this. I think the, pro I think the problem is the closer the you... The tax, that is. Right. The, the further right. away you get, a, get from yeah. the New Hampshire New border, Hampshire. Yeah. they right. don't look at it the same way we do. Yes. I really believe right. that yeah. this is going to um, hurt businesses, yeah. okay? I yeah. think that it's just, I think it's just flawed. And, you know, yeah. I've had debates, like, like I said, I've actually sat on the panels where people yeah. have, you're wrong, you're wrong, you're wrong. Well, that's okay. You can think that I'm yeah. wrong, but I still think it's a flawed process because yeah. I really, truly believe 
under that thought process, we should put a nickel on everything. Yeah, right. A cigarette cartons. Put a nickel yeah. on that. And, put a milk, <laughs> and the big milk whatever. Bottle, bottles, whatever. You yeah. know, whatever you see on the side yeah. of the road, think of it as a nickel. But then we put more and more taxes there. We drive more and more businesses away. We lose more and more jobs. We become Taxachusetts again, but you know, which we're trying to get rid of that. But I, I think people but, think that if you're against the bottle bill or against increasing it, you're against recycling. So and that's, no, not, that's not the case at all. It's the exact now. opposite. I mean, we're for recycling. Well, right? Absolutely. Yeah, our recycling. local stores, mom and pop stores, so to speak, in the area are already operating at a disadvantage anyways yeah. with the proximity to New Hampshire. Yeah. So by implementing, uh, a, you know, the additional nickel, you're just making it that much harder yes. for them mm -hmm. to continue to operate in these different stores throughout yes. the greater Lowell area. So yeah. it's something that uh, every time it comes up for discussion, you know, it's you get a lot of the uh, inner inner cities and in towards the Boston area and the South Shore. They were all in favor of it. Mm -hmm. In a lot of ways, it's almost a geographical. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, and I think we're losing the fight. Yeah. I mean, yeah. you know, I think we, we are, are losing we the fight. Slowly, slowly but, but surely. There are something like 110 legislators in the House. You think we're losing the fight in terms of more, more people are I think favoring the deposit uh, in the state eventually. House? Yeah. There's over 100 members well, like of the I said, House. Well, like I said, all Tom. those five candidates yeah. were the state Senate candidates right. were in favor of it. Unque like, sure. Didn't question it at all in, yeah. on the debate here. So Well, it's a more progressive district, and it's a Senate district, and it's, you know, yeah. it, it's, it's wide, town. and it's for a little It's different from south. where we are. We're right on the, the right border. On right on the border. Yeah, yeah some of those were down in Waltham. Well, that's what I'm saying. Jim's bringing exactly. up a very good point. There's, there's over 100 people, but it's it's a committee process. Right. Yeah. And, it, you know, some people love the committee process that we have, mm -hmm. and some people despise it. Right. But the fact is, you know, I'm, I'm not on, uh, say, public safety. Mm -hmm. uh, I can't be an expert on public safety issues. I wait for it to, you know, percolate to the top to start to study the issue. Yes. While we're studying, you know, energy and uh, David, I think, is on healthcare finance, you know, mm -hmm. or Jimmy, yeah. I forget who's on what. I mean, sure. I try to keep my own stuff under, of yeah. under control. Sure. But um, that's through the committee process. So. I see. Great. Well, maybe if we could start with Jim on this one on, on the state budget, Jim. How are we doing? Some people, I've read somewhere that people say we have a huge deficit somewhere, but we, we have don't. to have a balanced budget every year, right? Well, constitutionally, we do. We have a $32.5 billion budget. We have a $1.5 billion um, surplus, right, one of yeah, the, the healthiest surplus. surplus we've had. I give a lot of leadership to well, Chairman Dempsey. Um, do you ever see something, excuse me, quickly, sure. from the Republicans saying we have a, a huge debt or whatever here in Massachusetts. I don't know what it's talking about. It's, 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 it's not about. true. It's, they're, they're talking structural. It's not true. That's, um, but it's not true. Okay. Our, our fiscal health right now is, is look, with the pension reform we did, the three um, pension reform um, mm -hmm. uh, pieces that we did over the last um, over the last two sessions, mm -hmm. our bond ratings are double A plus. Um, you know, that means double A plus, double that's a, good. Double yeah, a plus that's and, and, you know, we're far exceeding the other New England states in terms of fiscal health. We have a $1.5 billion dollar um, surplus. surplus. And Mike Widmer, the Mass Taxpayers... Billion or billion? Just billion. Billion, billion, billion with yeah, a billion. Billion, sir. Yeah. The, the Mass Taxpayers Foundation um, has basically said that this was the, one of the most successful sessions we've had in decades. Um, think of the things we right. tackled. Right to repair. Mm -hmm. We got right to repair done in the last yeah. session. Um, you know, we increased local aid by $4 billion. Yeah. We brought all the cities and towns up to foundation level. And that's another discussion here in Chelmsford because we're not where we need to be in Chelmsford yet. Yeah. But we're, on the right, we're going in the right direction. We yeah. increased uh, Chapter 70 by $519,000 here in Chelmsford. Yes. Um, it's not where we need to be yet, but it's a, it's, it's a good step forward. But, um, you know, this, according to Mass Taxpayers and, and according to um, the Mass Municipal Association, local aid was the big winner in this budget. So wow. I think we're all very, very proud of this budget, but there's still a lot right. more work to do. Wonderful. Oh, Jim, I think it's interesting when you do say, when you talk about local aid, local aid is the big, big winner. Sure. I mean, to the detriment of some of the issues such as mental health mm -hmm. and, and, and things of that nature. Yeah. Um, you know, s let's say stateside issues. But um, we're not pitting one against the other, but, you know, we've made a collective decision. When we sit in caucus, we talk about what needs to happen. You know, are we gonna, going to put the... Uh, uh, there are no additional revenues, but are we going to move some revenues into Chapter 70 for school aid? Yeah. Are we going to move some revenues into um, local city aid, to city and town aid? And, the, you know, the answer is always yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So Great, wonderful. And so you agree, Dave, the oh, budget? Sure. The uh, Speaker Finneran about 12 years ago was the one that came up with the idea of this rainy day account right. uh, and created it. And you have to give him a lot of credit because when everything fell out about five years ago yeah. here, you know, some of those funds were there and they were using yes. a lot of them. I think we went down to as low as $300 million or $200 million at one point. 
now through the leadership, as Jim uh, alluded to, of Chairman Brian Dempsey down in Haverhill, um, is back up to 1.5 billion. Yeah. And we, uh, I would venture to say, we're in the top three or four states in the country with any sort of a uh, rainy day. Economy. Certainly are. So it, it's good fiscal uh, management, being prudent, being smart with your dollars. Yes. But there's always give and take, as Tom said. You know, uh, some of the uh, social service programs, unfortunately, have suffered over time. Yes. But yes. at the same time, the increase in local aid in Chapter 70 money is uh, uh, moving up the ladder continuously. And that's our yes. number one job as a legislator, yes. my belief, is to bring back the amount of money to a district for yes. education and local right. aid. Right. Well, uh, wasn't it a few years ago that uh, the taxpayers voted to bring the state tax rate down from 5.3% to 5%? Mm -hmm. What's the status of that? And are we ever going to do that? It's triggered. It's a triggered mechanism. Oh, and that's right. Yeah. So when, when's it going to be triggered? 5.25, right? Is it triggered to, to, to five? five? Well, about 25 years ago is when this took place, when they raised it up to the 6.6%. Mm -hmm. They raised it to 6.3, and then we well before. Like, well we before. It's back in the 80s. Yeah. Yeah. They went to 6.3, and then it was locked in at 5.95. Yes, right. I remember that for a long time. And yeah. then it was frozen at 5.3, and that happened... That had to have happened eight years ago. I was going to say six, seven eight, years. Yeah, yeah. probably eight years yeah. back. Yeah. And then it was triggered to go back down to 5% and once, you know, economic indicators were hit. So that's... So how does it look in terms of hitting fi those five point two? Yeah, 5.25 is, is, I believe it's happening. Okay, I, maybe I, you know, that's where we're at now, 5.25. Yeah. So what's the next trigger? I mean, I think a lot of people are interested in this, when it might go down to 5.1 or 5. Look, Do it's we, going, but it's going down by half a, half a point. Half a point, maybe. Yeah. So it might go each year as long as point, the economic as as indicators, indicators are, are okay. Right. Yeah. Okay, great. And that won't great. be no, that won't be known until G uh, January. I think it's January. Great. Think Wonderful. Known. But that's um, you know the interesting thing is when we when we had the um, the um, rainy day account, yeah. the abuse some of the abuse that was taken was that we were taking the taxpayers' money, because it, as David had, uh, alluded, right. the then Speaker Finneran made the decision to move things over, yeah. brought it before the caucus. The caucus yeah. made. Really, the caucus makes the call yeah. mm -hmm. whether we're right. going to do this or not. Yeah. Um, but of course, you know, it's 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 like uh, kind of what I was talking about earlier that the, the quarterback gets the blame. Yeah. Well, right. uh, whether it be the manager or the speaker or the local rep, you know, when you're trying to quarterback some of these things, yes. you, you take the blame. But that's yeah. probably one of the best votes we've had, we had ever taken, mm -hmm. um, and that's to create the rainy day account yes, where so you know X percent. It's important, and it helps so much as Dave said a few years ago mm. when we really needed that money oh, sure. to help us get through the. I call it a depression. But I, 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 I think answering the question about the structural. When, they, when you talk about the structural deficit yeah. that yes. sometimes you'll hear, yeah. that's because they'll borrow money from the rainy day account, mm. yeah. therefore creating, say, if a half a million dollars mm -hmm. or $500 million, or yeah. then that's structurally supporting uh, the budget. Yeah. So that's, you know, that's where I think they, some people will I start to misspeak. I don't know. I, I just see that number yeah, a lot. People say, yeah. like, we had a huge deficit. I don't know. I we're never saw it explained well what they're talking about. We're constitutionally, so uh, uh, constitutionally, we have to have a, a uh, balanced budget. Mm -hmm. So given that it seems that our budget process is going well, we're doing well economically, mm -hmm. we have a double-A plus rating, mm -hmm. right. I guess. How do you think Governor Patrick is doing during his, he's in his second term now. How has he done, and do you think he's been a good governor? Who wants to tackle that one first? I have so many different things. You know, I disagree well, with him. I've disagreed with him on, right. on some issues, but, you know, overall, I, I think he's done a pretty good job. I mean, it's, it's been, look, he's... <laughs> You know, it's been one of the worst economic situations. We're all in it together, you know, and it's been one of the worst economic situations we've been in in 75 years. You know, we started, we cut almost $5 billion out of, a, uh, out of the budget over the last five years, and we had to kind of, you know, change the way we did business. You know, Governor, Governor uh, Patrick filed pension reform bills that the House and the Senate agreed upon. Like I said, the, the, you know, we tackled municipal health reform, um, which was not an easy thing to do, and that was something that um, I know Chelmsford, um, saved over a million dollars um, mm -hmm. by by you know embracing um, you know a, way, a new way oh, yeah. of doing business to, yeah. to, to, to you know change uh, with plan design yeah. or the option the plan GIC design or, or GIC or plan design yeah, or, or, or to design? achieve to achieve savings yeah which was great um, that helped us a lot right so now we're at the uh, loan on that is between six and nine million dollars wow. yeah. and initially uh, the manager yeah. thought it would be about a three million dollar yeah. savings in the first year wow. and they've seen six to nine million right now 130 130 communities have opted in Mm -hmm. um, to um, you know municipal health right. reform. Well, it's well, a local option, yeah. Yeah. and 
you know, we've far exceeded the 100 million yeah. per year that we thought we were going to exceed. Right. Yeah. And it's now up to something like 175 million dollars we've saved so far. So we're doing things that aren't necessarily popular. They're sometimes painful, but yeah. they're necessary. Oh yeah, yeah. Mm. And Governor Patrick again. Well, well that's what you think I agree doing? with him yeah. on those issues. Well, I mean, agree with him. yeah, yeah. Governor yeah. Patrick. I mean, I think Jimmy hit the nail on the head. People are not interested in us fighting with each other. Right. Right. They don't want to hear it. They're not interested. You know, we're all adults. Yes. Yeah. You have to put your differences aside, whether you believe in this or not. You have to work together. That being said, I mean, I've agreed with the governor on many issues. I've disagreed with him very vocally mm -hmm. on others. Yeah. But, I mean, you have to work together. How has he done? I think he's done a fine job. Yeah. I don't think, yeah. you know, it's this isn't... Um, being uh, the executor is not, I don't think, a very easy job mm -hmm. yeah. uh, at all for anybody. Yeah. Uh, maybe during the high time when things just continue to go up yeah. and you're giving everything, every, oh, yeah. everything to everybody that they yeah. want, I think it's a lot of, uh, it's very, very easy to do. But yeah. I think we've done, I think we've done pretty well around here. Yeah. Some of the projects that Jim and even mentioned and David were talking about, uh, that happens because the legislature funds some of those programs. Yes. The governor says yes. We petitioned the governor, the executive branch, to come in and spend money at Katrina, to spend money on the, um, to finish up the, um, the uh, Bruce Freeman Trail. Mm -hmm. You know, yes. things okay. like that. That yes. that's stuff that's happened. Mm -hmm. So I, I'd have to give him a, a, definitely a passing grade, no question oh, yes, about right. it. But I think mo more so because during yeah. difficult times, you have to make difficult decisions. And, and I he's think had, made he made some difficult decisions. I think the legislature has been right, right. there. And the legislature, yeah. yeah. Because you all work together with. But the hey, if we all agreed on everything, right? I mean, yeah, this would oh, be. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you know, I mean, the, 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 the you know. talk shows would be uh, sure out, right. out, out, of out of business. Yeah, out yeah. of business. But you know, I but think we all disagree with him on on his decision with Melissa's law. Dave was very vocal on that. On yeah. EBT, EBT, uh, Representative Gold was really uh, you know vocal on that. I I didn't think yes. we needed a Washington D.C. office for six hundred thousand dollars a year. Um, we got rid right. of that, and, yeah, and you know, God. I mean, those are types of things we don't we don't agree with him on. But you know what? When it comes to jobs and the economy and getting people back to work. You know, yeah. he was the first one to, to move forward with the skills gap on his state of the state uh, speech, Great. and we all embrace that. So Great. we Wonderful. agree and we disagree, but yeah. we think uh, he's done a good job. I agree with you because you, you know you can't agree with anybody of all the time. Of I guess. Well, that's so. politics yeah. is a funny thing. Yeah. You know, Jim and I can disagree on an issue yeah. when it comes to you know David as well. Mm -hmm. We can disagree on an issue, yeah. but I can guarantee you we're still going to have coffee later on. Just oh because yeah, it doesn't that's matter right. if you know he's yes, I'm no. We can talk it right. out. Yeah, I'm not going to change Jim's mind. Jim's not going to change David's yeah. mind. But tomorrow, the next day, we have to work together to get another project completed. And that's the way it should be. Sure. That's right. what I mean, because that's politics. I think Governor Christie says this all the time. You have to compromise to get things done. Right. And you, have to, respect and you have to respect other people's opinion. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. And even though you can be vocally against something yeah. or vocally saying, yeah. what is he thinking or she thinking yeah. or what's going on, yeah. I think that that's part of the game. And it's a, it is a little bit rough and tumble at yeah. times. Uh, but, you know. Yeah. That's the way it is. Mm. I would give him a, a passing grade uh, comment. He's, uh, I give him credit, as Jimmy talked about earlier, the health care reform. He was the first one to get the ball rolling on that. He had his own plan yeah. going. We took it, maybe we changed did. the dynamics a little bit of it, yeah. but I think that's the biggest savings that we've seen in the Commonwealth. I think that um, he's, he's done a pretty good job over, uh, over his uh, six years now, coming up mm -hmm. upon six years. Mm -hmm. Tommy said something here a minute ago about the uh, uh, partisan effort, you know, and the bickering and the fighting. And just to go into that for a second, when you talk about that throughout the district, the number one complaint I hear, I think it's more so on a national level than here on a state level, is the bickering, the fighting, the standoffs, and everything else. And something that's very interesting, 53% of the registered voters here in Massachusetts are independents. Mm -hmm. 35 percent of Democrats and 11 or 12, whatever it is, are, are Republicans. That's telling you something. You know, at most at one time, obviously, the Democratic Party was probably up at 60 something percent compared yeah. to that. It shows you the change. It shows that people want to vote for the person, the individual, yes. more so than the party line. Yeah. And I think that's uh, something that you're going to see in the uh, U.S. Senate race yeah. uh, as we go along here. I know that um, Senator Brown is portraying himself as someone that can work across both sides of the aisle. Yeah. Um, you know, and, and it was, I believe it was uh, President Clinton the other night referred to that, that you have to work with both sides. Yes. And yes. as Tommy mm -hmm. just said here, the same thing, you know, um, Brad Jones is a friend of ours, a minority leader. Um, George Peterson. George Peterson, we used to have uh, good friend Bob Hargraves out in uh, Groton and Dunstable, who was a great man that retired. Sure, we may disagree with him on certain things, but it doesn't change anything at the end of the day. 
And I just think on a national level that it's gone too far. Some people will say, oh, oh I don't yeah. think so, but That's I think it I has. Think. Absolutely. I think, yeah, we don't have to talk to about the other party as if they're terrible, terrible people who don't no, know right. anything. And, and they're evil. Name yeah. It doesn't help anything either. We're three Democrats in the same work. area. We don't yeah. agree on everything. The yeah, three right. of us. I mean, right. we're the same party, but same area, just, and we don't agree on everything. Right, issue. but we still could be respectful in and our We're still flipping burgers. Yeah, yeah right. We're still flipping burgers. That's right, together. And serving chips the other day, right? Yeah. But Dave, you know, Dave, Representative Gold, I mean, uh, Nagel hit it right on the nose. I mean, and that's the fact that, you know, 53% of the state is unenrolled or yes. independent. My yeah. district in particular, 66% is unenrolled. Yes. You know, and yeah. I've embraced good ideas regardless of who proposed it Which since I've Democrat been elected. Republican, it doesn't and matter. it's such a high I, number of independents. Look at the EBT and 80, issue. 84% yeah. of my district votes. Sh wow. Shauna, mm -hmm. Shauna O'Connell from Taunton, Republican yep. from Taunton. And Russell Holmes. And Russell Holmes from Dorchester. Right. A Democrat from Dorchester. Right. You couldn't have picked two people, opposite you know, if, right. if, 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 if you were to just say, you know, these two folks, opposite end of the spectrums, yes, yes. they were the folks that really took the the initiative. Sure. Um, and a lot of support. We all signed on on the EBT yeah. right. uh, reforms. reforms yeah. But, you know, the, these two folks, not everybody, you can't have, you know, 25 people in charge of, a, of, of one issue. Mm -hmm. You find two people, they come together, they muster support behind it, right. and and those two folks and got now, it done. And now the EBT cards can't be used for certain things, right? It's in the process. Like, it, it's oh, it's actually in the, process, in the process of working. And it maybe will have, so they can't buy maybe liquor, cigarettes. That's right. right. Scratch right. tickets. There were certain easy ones that just went right off. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then there is still cash benefit. There is still a cash benefit right now, and I have to give Shauna credit. By that, credit. you mean they could get cash they with could the still cards, get cash right. today. So, okay. Because so, therefore... But, yeah. but Shauna yeah. O'Connell, the Republican, yeah. she turned around and made sure that there was $100,000 in there, not to ask the insiders to figure out how to do it, but yeah. to actually bring in, bring in a yes. consulting group right. from yeah. the outside. Yeah. And I think, truthfully, yeah. Yeah. that's what we needed we to do. We invested, yeah. yeah, I mean, uh, we as Representative Golden said, we invested in, I think it was almost even more than 100000 but a tremendous amount on, on a study to go towards a cashless system. I said, great. So that's what we're going to, you know. But you can't just well, do everything overnight, you know, and, 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 you know, some folks were upset with that. And we all we all wanted it to, to ban cash. I want to end it like that. But but yeah. you know you, you got to be reasonable, and, yeah. and yes. it's the best we could yeah. do at the moment, and we're going to get there. Oh, wonderful. Well, we only have a few minutes left, and I wanted to make sure we talk about the presidential race sure. and the U.S. Senate race. Yeah. Since you mentioned uh, the Senate race, why don't we talk? How do you think that race is going with Elizabeth Warren and Scott Brown? How are we voting, or how do we no, think it's no, going to go? No, no, I don't care how you're voting. But <laughs> well, I think no. Yeah, I, think I, there's the two different questions. I don't, yeah. I don't want to ask how you're going to vote okay. or anything. But how do you think they're doing in their campaigns? Uh, who do you think is ahead now? How do you think it, who do you think might win? Some, you know, innocuous I, things like that. <laughs> today, I yeah. think Obama, yeah. Brown. Yeah. That's, that's what I yeah. think. That's, I mean, that's today. Yeah. Tomorrow that yeah. could change. Yeah. But you know, and today from what I'm seeing, what I'm, you know, what I'm hearing, what I'm talking to people, knocking, mm -hmm. uh, knocking on doors. I was at an event the other day, yeah. and it seems as though that the president is uh, doing well. Mm -hmm. So is Scott Brown. Yes. That's what I'm hearing. Yeah. I think I just heard something earlier this morning. I don't know if it was the New York Times or someone had done a poll, and in the so-called six or seven or eight swing states, the uh, you know Florida and Ohio and Colorado and Pennsylvania and all these states, the president is up 54 to 40 percent, which I think is a pretty wow. big number yes. in those seven or eight collective states. So yeah. I agree with Tom. I think the president gets reelected, yeah. um, but at the same time, I think that Senator Brown is going to get reelected. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yep. That's, you know, that's, there it is, yeah. though. You know, you're starting over here with the president, and you're going back and forth, and this is what people, yes. the general public, and this will all change. This will all change tomorrow. Yeah, when I mean, we see probably be Romney new. and Warren. <laughs> yeah. be Romney and Warren for all we yeah. know. Yeah. You know. Well, there's still a lot of, you know, there's obviously, you know, Ohio and, and a few other yeah. swing states that are still in play. I think, you know, I, I think um, President Obama and Romney too close to call. I, yeah. I think I give the president an edge, but it's going to be too close to call on the U.S. Senate race. I think right now, I think the latest polling data had suggested that. Um, Senator Brown is up 6% or 6.5% or something yeah, like that. Five, six, seven, um, seven. You know, his message is resonating with, with folks, you know, and, and I, you know, we, talking about the, 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 the partisan bickering, talking about supporting good ideas, um, talking about jobs, I think those are all very positive. But, you know, this is what we see also in the suburbs and, right. and the northeast part of, yes. um, of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. You know, the city of Boston and, and a lot of uh, the cities and towns surrounding Boston, you know, very well could determine this race for the U.S. Senate seat. So yeah. uh, I, wouldn't count, um, I wouldn't count the Democratic nominee out yet. Um, but um, right for now, for Senate, for, for yeah, Senate right. but right now I think Brown's poised to win. Yeah, yeah, great. I don't count anybody out. I mean, no, no. Really. Oh, now, here's well, the interesting thing is, yeah. right? Because I say this, because when, whenever we're out knocking, talking, or whatever, yeah. in groups, what do you think? 
because people always want to know what we think. <laughs> yeah. Okay. And I'm not trying to put you on the spot, oh, yeah, but it's no, always no, more gee, interesting yeah. because <laughs> yeah. people will say I was at a right. I was at an event, uh, a Jack and Jill. By the way, they're back. Uh, okay. Full, you know, I was at I was at one the other night, 250 <laughs> people, and everybody wanted to talk about you it. You know, yes. I said that to someone from the South Shore recently. I said I got to go to a Jack and Jill. They looked at me. <laughs> <laughs> three heads and said, what are you talking yeah. about? So I had to explain. But, but they're back yeah. anyhow. Yeah. Yeah. So it's that one the other day. And, um, I should have had one. <laughs> <laughs> I'm barely getting by, man. Oh, you know, yeah. something. They weren't back when I you should have had one. A newlywed. They weren't back then. They just got yeah. back. Yeah. But that's what I always throw to people. What do you think? What's going on? Oh, what yeah. are you hearing? Oh, I and that's what I hear. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I kind of. Well, you know what I do? I check the in-trade prediction markets every morning. Yeah. And the in-trade predictions, for those of you who don't know, it's called the in-trade prediction markets. And it's a wonderful resource. It's a place where people could actually bet on elections, on whether the country is going to go into recession, Not that we're whether this uh, uh, president of Syria is going to be deposed or whatever within the next year, all kinds of things like that. So right now, you all are correct in terms of how the in-trade prediction looks like. President Obama is way ahead in that particular yeah. market. Mm -hmm. you, you guys probably are familiar. Right. Yep. And Scott Center Brown race. also is ahead by not a huge amount. It fluctuates, but right now he's at a 53% probability yeah. that Scott Brown would win. Yeah. But I check it first thing every morning. Mm -hmm. But as you said, that we're still, we're taping this a little less than two weeks from the election in November, right? right. I mean, two months, I'm sorry. Two months from the election. So just to let you know, as we all said, anything could change. Anything change. And Elizabeth Warren, you know, I thought she did a good job at the, uh, at the, the Democratic did, Convention and gave a great speech. And she has a tremendous amount of support. And I think she's a very strong candidate. But also, Scott Brown is a very strong candidate. He didn't speak at the Republican convention, no. though, right? No, he did not. In fact, there was all this scuttlebutt, you know, he that he was spending no. as little time there as possible. <laughs> if you notice you that, know? the former president didn't speak at the convention, President Bush. Oh, I He wasn't that, even yes. invited, is my understanding. Oh, no, yeah. So but he had a little... Can't imagine I, why. I had a question, <laughs> yeah. though. On that uh, site that you go on, what does it say about Golden and the Pirate Party? Right. Who's <laughs> winning on that one? Yeah. Well, that's going to be trade. a tough race, they in say. Trade. The Pirates yeah, are ahead. Pirate. <laughs> yeah. I might be with the Pirates after but, the show. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> and we, we also the, uh, have some... Uh, well, we don't have time to get into it, but we have three important ballot questions on the Massachusetts ballot this year. Uh, one for the... the Right to die or death with dignity mm -hmm. bill and well, one uh, was the right to repair, which right we, we actually we, yeah. we we corrected. That's correct. Yeah. And it's, yeah. we were kind of happy that <laughs> we could work could, you know, with, the, with the right to repair. Yeah, you had service stations against service stations. Oh, I know. Oh. And they would come in and talk to us, and I said, "Fellas, yeah. if you folks can't even agree, I know. You had five yeah. guys for it, five guys against sure. it." I said, you know, this is an internal squabble between you yeah. folks as to what is going on here. Yeah. We, I remember this NASARA, which is the organization for the New England service stations. One day they were in my office and they were asking me this and that, sure, we get the information. And about three weeks later, I said, what? They had gone a complete 360 and reversed their stance. Oh, I know. And it was confusing. It was very confusing. Said. Yeah. At that point, I said, you know what? You, you folks got to work this all Certainly. out on your own at the yeah. beginning here. Yeah. I said, you can't decide one day to the next what you're going to be doing. So that, yeah. was, that was awful. But as I Jim mean, said, it was correct. It was finally nice. worked yeah. out. But, but, but to my understanding, yeah. they, can, you know, they can now you know, repair at their local shops, but they also preserve the, you know, the patent integrity, if you will, yeah. the intellectual property of, oh, of, of the major companies. Well, so, and that we're, you know, we're very happy. We got that done uh, late. the last well, day. Very, <laughs> very, <laughs> very late, late in the session. Late. Hey, that, that was like not a, the proverbial hot potato, but it yeah. wasn't, it, it, nobody knew, even the, the industry didn't know what they wanted. Right. right. Wow. So. Well, one thing I want is you guys on the show again today. I think oh, it's absolutely. Been fantastic. Oh, it's great. I, it's great. I love to talk politics, and you guys seem to love it as well. You like to talk politics, well. really? <laughs> you know, this is, I'm in my 18th year doing this little show. No How kidding. do you think That's I lost terrific. all this, all this <laughs> worry about <laughs> preparing for the show? Look, 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 look at these guys. My hair's going white. <laughs> I mean, these guys will look, you know, look like a million bucks <laughs> for both of them. But uh, thank you very much, uh, Dave Nang, for being on the show again. It's been a lot of fun, and I think you added a great deal of insight, along with Tom Golden. Thank you Carmen, very much. thank you again. And thank you very much, Carmen, Jim Arciro. Wonderful it. job. And uh, we're going to have more candidates, more debates on the show before the November election, so please keep tuning in. Our shows are all going on YouTube now, so you can go in there and just do a search for Politically Incorrect, and hopefully all of our shows will show up, our recent shows, since we've been getting them on YouTube. Uh, thank you very much for watching the show. If you have any comments or if you're a candidate and want to be on the show, please send me an email at tcristiano at comcast.net. Thank Ciao. you, Carmen. Thank you, thank Carmen. You. Thank you very much. Well, that was...